Today we're going to make a simple steamed banana sponge pudding. So my ingredients for this are one ripe banana, one heaped cup of self-raising flour, three quarters of a cup of sugar. I'm using caster sugar here, but you could use soft brown sugar. You could use granulated sugar if at a push, but uh, caster sugar combines more easily. One cup of butter or soft baking spread, two eggs, some golden syrup, or if you can't get that, honey or any other kind of thick sugar syrup you can get. Maybe coconut syrup would work really well with this actually, but that's the kind of consistency of syrup you're looking for. This is golden syrup, it's a thing we have in the UK. And then we're going to serve that with custard, which is going to be made from milk and vanilla extract. I've got vanilla extract here, you could use vanilla pods if you prefer, and a cup and a half of milk. So let's get started. Oh yeah, just to just also to mention, we're going to be flavouring this with cinnamon, a little bit of star anise and nutmeg. But you could use any spices you want in there. So I've discovered that these Nutella glasses are the same size as a measuring cup, which is handy. And I've prepared a bowl, and I just made sure this is the right size by tipping. It needs to contain at least three cups of liquid. So I've tipped three cups of water in there, just to measure that this bowl is the right size. I'm not keeping that water. It's just for the purposes of measuring. In fact, we need to dry that out now. And it needs to be something that's heat proof because we're going to stand this in boiling water when it's covered and we're going to steam it that way. So you could use a ceramic one like this. You could use a metal basin. You could use a oven proof glass type of basin, but it needs to be heat proof. So we also need a nice bowl for mixing it all up in. So we're going to start by combining the butter with the sugar. So we're just going to mash that together until until it forms a nice smooth paste. This is a bit tricky if this has come straight out the fridge. If your butter is warm it will combine better. You can actually use vegetable oil in a recipe like this instead of butter you could just use a cup of vegetable oil and you could you won't have any trouble mixing that with the sugar and flour but we're just going to cream that together after a little bit of stirring and mashing it does start to come together there it goes just beat those together until they're properly mixed yeah, that's what we were aiming for, that's good. Okay, now eggs. I'm gonna use one egg plus the white of one egg in here, and I'm gonna reserve the yolk for making the custard. So that essentially means we have two chances at separating this egg, which is good. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crack it with a knife so that it comes neatly into two halves. And the way to do that is we'll do that over a glass in this case. And I just want the egg white from this one. And so I'm just going to pass that yolk back and forth between the two halves of the shell and kind of spill out the white while I go. That's good. Okay, so we've got a separated egg yolk right there, which I will just put in a small dish and set aside for now. So that egg white plus the whole of this egg into our cake mix. And then we're just gonna blend that together. And again, it's a little bit difficult at first. Just go gently at first so it doesn't splash out. And after a while, those things will start to combine. into a smooth mixture. And we keep beating that with a wooden spoon until we can't see any lumps or texture. Okay, that's good enough. So now we're just going to mash up this banana. It's a nice ripe one, so it should break up very readily. Oh, it smells good. So just gonna mash that up with the back of a fork. 
make sure we've got no large lumps of banana. And then that also goes into the mixture. Okay, now for the spices, you can really go as subtle or as bold as you want, but I want to go for something that's fairly subtle and balanced. So I've got a tiny little pinch, probably less than that, tiny little pinch of star anise, same tiny little pinch of cinnamon, and a little grind of nutmeg. Obviously, if you've got ground nutmeg, you can use that. I have fresh, so it's good. We'll just mix that in first. And now the flour. So we'll just add that a little bit at a time. Stirring it in as we go. That looks good. Right, now we're going to prepare the pudding basin. And for this we're just going to take a little bit of butter and rub it around the inside of the dish. It's particularly important on the sides here because we want it to release once it's baked. Put a little bit in the bottom as well, but most important is around the sides. Okay wash hands. So now we're going to put the pudding into the basin but first we'll have a nice generous squirt. I suppose this is going to be a couple of tablespoons of syrup in the bottom. You can use honey if you want. It will taste of honey obviously but that's not a bad thing. So yeah just enough syrup to cover the bottom of the dish like that. Then the pudding mix, cake mix, goes straight on top. Got to kind of get it in there fast or else it will push the syrup up the sides. Okay, now you don't need to worry too much about levelling this, it will level itself as it cooks. Let's just have a taste of that batter. Mm, that tastes good. Feel free to jump straight down to the comments and tell me I'm eating raw egg. And I will stop doing that as soon as I care. Right, so we gotta put that in a steamer now, but we can't just put it in like that. So we're gonna have a piece of baking parchment over that. Greaseproof paper, waxed paper, whatever you've got for covering that. And then a piece of foil as well. Now we're going to secure all of that in place with a bit of string and the easiest way I've found of doing that is make a loop at one end just like that but leave a tail on there like that and then you just kind of push that down to gather it. We pass the string through the loop like that to create a slip knot type of loop. We put that over the dish and then we can pull it tight. Make sure it's not too far down. And make sure we haven't missed any bits of foil or paper around the edge. This is the tricky part, probably the trickiest part of the entire recipe. Right. Now this, that's the tail end off the initial loop and then we just go back around again and then we can tie these two ends together nice and tight. This is the part where it really helps if you've got a, th a second person to put their finger on that knot while you tie the second knot. But you can do it yourself if there's just the one of you. Just like that. Okay, so now we'll just pick up that foil and paper so it's not dangling down the bottom. In fact what we can do is just trim off some excess here and the same at the other side.
and that is ready to be steamed. Okay, over here I've got my largest pan on a rolling boil with just enough water so that when I put this basin in, it will submerge about two thirds of the way up. So just to make it easier to drop in, I fashioned a little handle out of string, but we'll be very careful here because this is boiling water. Okay, and we're gonna put that in there like that. So the water level is only about two thirds of the way up that bowl. It mustn't come up to the top or else it will spill inside the cake and it will just make it all watery. Lid on, we'll turn that down so it's just a gentle boil and we're going to set a timer for an hour but we're going to check every 20 minutes just to make sure that water hasn't boiled away and if the water's getting a bit low we'll just top it up from the kettle so I'm going to move that to the back burner now because I want to make the custard okay now the custard we're going to make today is going to be a corn flour and egg custard you can make custard with just egg yolks and cream and, and sugar we're going to be using milk and egg yolks and corn flour, cornstarch and sugar. So the reason for using cornstarch instead of egg yolks to thicken our custard is just simplicity. It's actually a lot easier to make this custard, but also it's a lot of egg yolks. And this is a bit of an economy thing as well. So into the glass that's got about a tablespoon and a half of white sugar, we're going to put Two teaspoons full of cornstarch. Then we're going to take a little bit of the milk from there and just combine that together. You need to do that with just a tiny bit of milk. If you use too much it will create lumps and it won't combine. And then we need a whisk because we're going to put the egg yolk into the milk. Whoops, mess. We're going to put a few drops of vanilla extract in there. And whisk together. And then we're going to put this sugar and cornstarch mixture in and whisk that in too. Now chances are there's a bunch of British people scratching their heads and looking at me right now saying why are you doing it that way? Why don't you just use custard powder? Well, mainly because I'm making this recipe for people who don't have access to custard powder. Custard powder is just cornstarch, yellow colouring and vanilla flavouring. So we're doing this the hard way because I want this recipe to be accessible to people who don't have custard powder in their country. Anyway, that's all whisked together now, so we're going to get that in a pan and gently heat it. So over here in a milk pan, what a lovely handle, we're going to put in that custard mixture. And we're just going to warm it over gentle heat, whisking as we go. And it's important to keep this moving, because otherwise it will just burn on the bottom of the pan. Now this custard will be a bit paler than usual because I haven't added any yellow colouring and there's only one egg yolk in there. Normally custard powder has some annatto in there to give it a yellow colour or artificial yellow colour sometimes. I can feel this starting to thicken now as I'm whisking it and that's important to keep it moving and stop it burning on the bottom of the pan while it thickens. Now if you want the custard hot over the syrup sponge then obviously you would prepare this right at the last minute but it will stand and it will be it can be reheated if necessary and it's thickening up now and it, this happens quite suddenly as it comes up to near the boiling point of the milk it's worth turning the heat, heat down just a little bit so you don't scald it or burn it but we can see now that's thickening quite considerably. Now if it doesn't thicken you can mix up some more cornstarch and water or cornstarch and milk just a little bit and add small amounts until it does thicken. So if you've got it to the boiling point and it doesn't thicken you can add a cornstarch and milk mixture. Don't try adding dry cornstarch it will just form clumps and it'll be horrible. If it thickens too much so if we get to this the point it starts to turn into jelly you can just put a little bit more milk in there and whisk that in carefully and that will thin it back down again but we've got what I think is about the right texture here now so I'm going to turn the heat right down 
and I'm going to show you what we're looking for here. So I've got a spoon, and you can see it's just a it's not completely thick texture, but it's thick enough that when you do that, it doesn't actually flow back across. Okay, that's going to be completely off the heat now because that will continue to thicken a bit anyway. So that's the custard. Right, that's been bubbling away for about an hour now and I did have to top the water up with boiling water from the kettle just once to maintain the level. So now we're going to turn that off. We're going to carry it over to the other side and carefully remove that. Now we've got to be really careful here because we're dealing with boiling water and my cunning string handle has fallen down the side. So I'm just going to retrieve that string handle and we need to be really careful because if I drop this into the boiling water it's going to splash and that could injure me. So it's important to be really really careful with this. Make sure that that's not just going to give the moment I pull up on it. Okay, that's the most dangerous bit done. So we're just going to carefully open this up without cutting that foil and paper because I want to test that it is actually cooked properly. So I'm just going to snip through the string here and then reveal and we'll just check. No, it's not quite cooked. Yeah. Okay, that needs another 20 minutes, I think at least. So I'm going to put the foil back on carefully, retie it and back in the pan for another, oh, let's go for half an hour. Okay, so total cooking time, one and a half hours. Let's try that again. And again, we've got to be really careful here. This string's gone all kind of soggy where it's been steamed. Just snip off that string again. And hopefully, this time, we got it right. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's going to be done. Yeah, that's good. That skewer's coming out nice and clean. Oh, this, the aroma of banana coming off of this is wonderful. So, now, I'm just going to take a really thin, long bladed knife and carefully run it around the edge. I don't think we... I don't think we actually need to go all the way down because I think this is going to come out no trouble at all. Then I'm going to take that dish and stand it on a cloth because it's hot. Invert a plate on top. And then very carefully flip the whole thing over. And if we're lucky, and if we've done everything right, we've got a steam pudding. How about that? Doesn't that look fantastic? And it's, look at the slight wobble on that, which means it's this delicate, soft, sponge which is exactly what we want now you can get yourself a spoon rescue these syrupy bits out the thing here spread those on top so they don't go to waste mm, tastes good and the other thing people sometimes do is just to go and put another little bit of syrup on the top there but that's really kind of excessive. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, they say. Let's serve up a wedge of this treacle banana sponge steamed pudding. Look at that. Look how moist and delicate that sponge cake is in there. That's fantastic. And custard I would normally serve in a jug. This is really vanilla sauce. In fact, there'll be, there'll be some people watching who say, hey, that's vanilla pudding you just made. And you're not wrong. This is really a vanilla sauce because it lacks the yellow color of custard. So let's give it a taste and see what it's like. That is so delicious and it just melts in the mouth. And one banana has made this whole sponge cake taste intensely of banana. And one of the things that's helped with that is that star anise. Star anise is really good 
at enhancing the flavour of sweet fruits. That is a triumph. So part of the reason I've made this recipe is I want Babatunde now to try making this in Nigeria. Hopefully all the ingredients I've used are available to him. So Babatunde and family, have a go at making this. I want to see your reaction to eating a kind of British classic recipe. So I hope that was interesting and I hope that inspires you to make banana steamed pudding. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.